Tabua, and 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 Bula FM. Bula FM. Good evening. This is FBC News. I'm Akusita Tale. Tonight, Prime Minister reveals why goodwill payments to landowners have been abolished. ILO mission concludes Fiji visit and gives recommendations. And Health Ministry works around the clock to curb dengue fever. Details have emerged about why the Fisheries Ministry has abolished goodwill payments to landowners. Prime Minister Vorenge Ben Marama has explained that the money charged hasn't been shared equally. Ritika Pratap reports. The Fisheries Ministry has documented reports of individuals who have customary fishing rights abusing their position. They've been charging goodwill payment before giving consent to fishermen who wish to commercially fish in their waters. In most cases, most of the members from the land owning, land -owning unit that have customary fishing rights see little of these payments. If any, either, uh, either one chief pocketed or a handful of individuals. At the same time, the fisherman has to pay, uh, instead of one fee, instead of one fee, they have to pay two or three fees. Benny Marama says Section 30 of the Constitution gives all landowners the right to share in the royalties paid to extract minerals beneath their land or sea. The Prime Minister says when this legislation is adopted in the near future, all royalties will be distributed equally. The law recognizes traditional fishing rights and requires people who wish to engage in commercial fishing in those waters to pay a fee through the Ministry of Fisheries. It does not give certain individuals the right to turn an honest, hard-working man upside down and shake the money out of his pocket for his own personal gain. Benny Marama clarifies that this does not mean that those who have the right to fish in customary fishing areas won't be compensated by the state. What we are saying is that the law needs to be followed and when compensation, compensation is paid, it must be paid equally to everybody in the landowning unit. What we are also saying is that the fishermen must be allowed to contribute to the economy and of course, like everyone else, given a chance to earn a living. The goodwill payment system was introduced in 1987. Royalty payments for the use of traditional fishing grounds will follow the same system as equal payments of lease money for the use of K land. Pritika Pratap, FPC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Ben Marama says the government will continue working to provide educational opportunities for those living in rural areas equal to the educational opportunities in the urban areas. He made the comment after opening two government projects in the interior of Ba and Navosa today. But Boletamana has more on the story. Education continues to be the heartbeat of government as it looks to provide equal opportunity for all Fijian children, whether in rural or urban areas. I can think of no better way to spend my time and use my energy than to improve education in this country. I've said many times that I want to be remembered as the Prime Minister who finally made education free in Fiji. And not just because education is valuable in its own right, but also because it is the key to true equality. The Prime Minister today commissioned three teachers' quarters in Sivikoso in the middle of Viti Levu, as well as a bridge constructed by the RFMF engineers, water tanks, and an electrification project in Bukuya village. He says this is all in the hope of providing a platform for the children of these villages to harness their learning. I made a special commitment to this improvement, which cost a total of $170,000.
all funded by my office under the 20, 2014 Small Grant Scheme project. When we have better facilities for students, we make it easier for them to learn. And when we have proper facilities for teachers, we make it easier for them to teach. Bain Maram also concedes that while the state is bidding to promote education, there are a number of teething issues that need to be dealt with to ensure the program prospers. It is a shame that some civil servants in the Ministry of Education fail to ensure that our children receive their textbooks from day one of the new term in the new year. This is a serious matter. The minister has been informed. First, it, is not, it not only deprives children of the books they need, but it infringes on their constitutional right. Second, it undermines the people's faith in the institution that is charged with guaranteeing that right. The Prime Minister continues with his tour of the Western Division tomorrow and will carry on next week. Madhium Balitamana, FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Ben Marama has directed the Fiji Roads Authority to fix and build roads in priority areas first. Speaking at a Talno session in Nandi last night, Ben Marama said he's seen companies contracted by the FRA digging good portions of road in towns and cities to patch potholes. He says these are not priority roads and can be done in years to come, but rural areas need more attention as it affects children's education. But in the rural areas where they required uh uh, where maybe bridges are required to be built, uh, culvert need to be put in, uh, road needs to be fixed so that they, the buses don't slide. If that doesn't happen, kids don't go to school. And we've had reports and reports and reports of kids not going to school because the roads are not fixed. The Prime Minister is awaiting a progress report from FRA on what's been fixed so far and what is to be made public. Services at the Nandi Hospital are at peak capacity, according to administrators. Their comment follows Prime Minister Vorenge Ben Marama saying Nandi Hospital gets the most criticism and he wants something done about it. The hospitals in Fiji. Prime Minister Vorenge Ben Marama fielded a host of questions and complaints at a Talanoa session in Nandi last night. However, issues surrounding Nandi Hospital services seemed to irk him. I get more complaints about the Nandi Hospital than any other hospital in Fiji. Maybe when you are making your comments, can you please also address this and tell me why is there a lot of complaints about service in the Nandi Hospital? Subdivisional Medical Officer Dr. Abdul Shah was on hand to explain the situation. He notes Nandi Hospital, given its size, has way too many people to care for. It has actually a huge load. If you look at uh, its boundaries, it starts from uh, Pau, Momi, and right up to Sameto. And in between there are no health centers. So all the crowd from this area is actually packed up in Nandi Hospital. Eh? The stretch between Momi and Sameto in Nandi is about 36 kilometers long and includes all surrounding communities and settlements. There is at least one health center likely to come online this year to help decentralize medical services from the Nandi Hospital. Dr. Shah says there is also a proposal for a public-private partnership in Kurovuto which could be available within the year. However, it needs to be expedited by the Health Ministry finalizing the agreement, land acquisition and other related issues. Until then, Nandi Hospital must cope with the load. Edwin Nand, FBC News. The International Labour Organization Tripartite Mission to Fiji has concluded that there is room for the parties to agree and ensure compliance with the ILO standards on freedom of association. This is part of the mission's initial report, having held four days of discussions with the government, the unions and employer re representatives. Maggie Boyle tells us more. The three-member ILO tripartite mission has this afternoon wrapped up its visit, having met with tripartite partners all week. In a statement this afternoon, the ILO team reports that it has been able to ascertain a full view of the obstacles to the submission of a joint implementation report by the government of Fiji, the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation and the Fiji Trades Union Congress. 
in accordance with the tripartite agreement that they signed in March 2015. The statement goes on to say that there is significant room for the parties to achieve consensus around the steps that need to be taken to remove any remaining obstacles and ensure compliance with the ILO standards on freedom of association. The mission says it's encouraged by the steps taken thus far and has invited the parties to pursue these efforts in good faith towards their full completion before the ILO governing body meeting in March this year. The tripartite mission is a first step by the ILO to evaluate the situation in Fiji after the parties failed to agree on labor law reforms with the question of whether or not a commission of inquiry should be called most parties from the government, employers and the union who've spoken about the discussions say that the visit has been fruitful and they've been able to put their case forward. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Still to come, Lao villagers plead for assistance to rebuild their houses damaged by Cyclone Ula. And I love me to your family. Hi, my name is Sonny. From Canberra, I love listening Mirchi FM online. I am Urmila Devi, Asiasi Tawa, Jiten Shandil Ko or Ashnil Ko. Tawa me lock kar diya jaye. Ham log yeh se kato kame Mirchi FM sunta hai. Mirchi FM is hot. I'm Shelly in Tanga No Sorry. Mirchi music simply windas in No Sorry. Mirch fuck, bal bushe. Mirchi FM, mere nas nas mein. Mirchi FM. Welcome back, this is FBC News. An effort to curb the rising number of dengue cases is on the Health Ministry's priority list, says the National Advisor for Communicable Diseases, Dr. Maikama. So far this year, there are 85 lab-confirmed cases of dengue. Farzana Nisha has more. The National Advisor for Communicable Diseases, Dr. Maikama, says a surge in dengue cases is a worry for the ministry. Well, it becomes an urgent agenda eh? every time dengue, you know, the dengue issue comes up or leptospirosis or typhoid, these are priority communicable disease in the ministry. Uh, so the ministry is already responding, eh, as I had mentioned in previous interviews, eh, uh, responding in the north and responding now in the west eh, uh, to, to the situation on the ground. Eh? So we are hoping that it will be resolved uh, uh, sooner eh, rather than later with, uh, with our officers who are there in the field. The dengue symptoms in adults include high fever, severe headache, pain behind the eyes, muscle and joint pains, nausea and vomiting. Dr. Kama says they have not registered any deaths so far, which they want to avoid. The mosquito doesn't differentiate between people. Eh? It will feed on blood. Eh? So because that is the uh, vector for transmission of the disease, eh? the mosquitoes. Eh? So, yeah, so this is what we expect. Eh? Is the, um, they call it the epidemiological picture eh? uh, of the disease uh, as it moves along. Dr. Kama adds the situation with dengue right now is more endemic rather than an epidemic outbreak. People have been advised to keep their surroundings clean and destroy mosquito breeding places. Farzana Nisha, FBC News. A document which aims to strengthen the defense and security of Fiji underwent final consultations in Suva today. The National Security Strategic 2016 was discussed with relevant stakeholders. It embodies the government's vision for a safer, secure and prosperous Fiji. Ellen Stalls reports. The National Security Strategy will be the first for Fiji and replaces the white papers other countries have. Minister for Defense and National Security Timothy Natuva says once completed, the strategy will link the police, immigration and intelligence agencies. We need to redouble our efforts to keep Fiji safe, to bolster the security of our people, the security of our sovereign nation and the security of our resources. Fiji is determined not to, be, to become an easy target. The completion of this strategy will advocate a multi-agency, multidisciplinary approach to Fiji's defense challenges. Ambassador Teleni chairs the council carrying out this review, which began last year. I want to remind you it is still a draft and it is still evolving, which means whatever comes out today in our discussion it will be again considered in finalizing the draft. The document includes areas like improving border security, territorial integrity, strengthening public order, 
safety and civil defense. The Defense Minister and Ambassador Teleni agree that the document needs to be reviewed every few years in order to ensure the safety of all Fijians today and for generations to come. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Two families on Vatoa Island in the southern Lao are pleading for assistance to rebuild their houses. The two houses were badly damaged during tropical cyclone Ula earlier this month. Ali Kimbia has more. Vatoa Island in the southern Lao group felt the full brunt of tropical cyclone Ula. Out of the ten houses that were affected, two were badly damaged and the occupants are seeking for assistance to rebuild. <laughs> I really don't know what else to do. I am 73 years old now and I don't have any money to rebuild my house. But I'm hoping that the government will assist me because I don't have anywhere else to go. Father of two, Mabua Dati, says his family was lucky enough to escape death when their corrugated iron house blew away. Dati is hoping that assistance will be provided for them to restore all they lost during tropical cyclone Ula. I'm hoping and asking for government to help us to build my house. All I'm thinking of is my family. NDMO Director Akapusi Tuifangalele told FBC News that plans are currently underway to assist families who were affected. They have already compiled the report. It's already been sent to us. We are, we are collating that report in regards to the, the council meeting that we have had last week. Uh, with that, um, we are intending to uh, uh, push the paper across to cabinet uh, sometimes early next week. NDMO confirms that the assessment report has revealed that three islands who were badly affected were Onoilau, Watoa and Ongea. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Parliamentarians have been told to be more aware and equip themselves with skills and information related to gender equality and empowerment. This was highlighted by Minister for Women Rosie Akbar at the opening of the first gender policy dialogue for MPs in Singatoka today. The three-day forum will ensure that parliamentarians have a better understanding to identify practical measures and strategies to address the impact that gender equality has on development. Akbar stressed the importance of the national gender policy to be part of the government's actions and priorities. All ministries have been told to make firm commitments and take positive actions to achieve gender equality and eliminate violence against women and girls. We have it in front of us an opportunity to make real change in Fiji. When future generations look back on these efforts, we can tell them that we chose the right side of history. We chose the side of equality, the side of peace, the side of unity. We can tell them that we fought to give the women of Fiji an equal shot in life. Over the next two days, the forum will allow MPs to look at the links between gender inequality and violence against women and examine how this will affect the country's development as well. The Fiji Performing Rights Association Music Awards will be held on the 14th of May at the Grand Pacific Hotel in Suva. This was confirmed following the awards launch in Suva this morning. FBRA publicist Lide Movono Rova says the awards will be an exciting event for music in Fiji. This year, the awards will have 14 categories. A new one has been added, and this will be announced soon. Tickets will sell for $150, and nominations for categories are now open till Friday, the 4th of March. And sports now, here's Charlie. Good evening. In sports after the break... The build-up to the Wellington Sevens continues and Suva withdraws from the Bulada Volleyball Championships. Details coming up. Bula, I'm Duri from Nassin Market. My choice is simple, Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Fayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Rocky Rocky. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandy. I love listening to Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.
Vodafone Fiji 7's coach Ben Ryan hopes his side can maintain a consistent performance in the Wellington and Sydney 7's tournaments. The national side is currently joint leaders in the World Series standings alongside South Africa with 35 points. Josephine Nabula has the details. After winning the Dubai 7s and bowing out in the Cup quarterfinals in Cape Town, the Vodafone Fiji 7s know consistency is important in the next two legs. Coach Ben Ryan says he will be banking on his players to stay focused on the main goal, which is building up to the Rio Olympic Games in August. We want to defend our World Series title and, and the plan is to go into Rio as number one team in the world. To do that, we're going to have to have a consistent two tournaments. For me, that means at least 35 series points we're going to need to try to take off the next two tournaments. We're six points ahead of where we were last year as far as Dubai and the South Africa legs. The team, as usual, will take one game at a time. We need a good, strong tournament. Uh, I don't really want to lose more than one game. Ideally, we don't lose any. Ideally, we go back to back, but that's not my priority. Priority is improvements, blooding a few young players, giving them an opportunity as well. Ryan is aware of the top task ahead of the team, but is confident the players are ready. Um, how do we change it? How do we deal with it? What have I got in the group to make sure that we can have those challenges and rise to them? So there's some tactical thoughts around the squad. Meanwhile, this is the 12th member squad selected to run on the field in the first match against Japan at 11.36 a.m. on Saturday. Josephine Novula, FBC Sports. FBC Sports spoke to some members of the public on their predictions on which two teams will clash in the Wellington Sevens Cup final. Uh, I think uh, Fiji is a very good team and a uh, very experienced team. And uh, I think uh, Fiji will be meeting uh, New Zealand in the final. Well, we think two teams, uh, Fiji and New Zealand, will go in final and uh, Fiji will win. It is going to be a tough and close final between Fiji and New Zealand, but Fiji will win in the end. Fiji and New Zealand. Fiji is going to win the final. Fiji is my best team. Remember, you can watch live action of the Wellington Sevens right here on FBC TV. Suva has withdrawn from the Wolodha Volleyball Championship, which starts tomorrow. Administration issues have forced the Blues out of the first major tournament of the year. Officials of the nine member associations of the Fiji Volleyball Federation met yesterday to prepare for the Wolodha Championship. But following the discussion about the rules that govern the association, Suba withdrew their participation. The Suba Association is concerned about such things as some members not paying their annual registration fees, not holding the required weekly competitions, and not having the required number of teams. I come to ask whether all the association that has uh, uh, shown uh, interest in participating for the Vula to, to comply with all those uh, requirements that they've set out. Uh, upon asking, uh, I was told by the Vice President, uh, Mr. Nainduki, that uh, none of the association has complied. These are some of the rules which Suba has stuck to from day one and is the only association following all the regulations. We had thought that, you know, some of the association, they, comes in, they come in with only a team. Um, I, want, I don't want to name other association, but uh, we know that some of the association um, are not really complying with their requirements, and yet they are saying uh, they can join the uh, Fiji Volleyball Federation. We had thought that if they had put their foot down, um, we would see only the core, core, core association that joins uh, Fiji Volleyball for the season. Organizers of the Wulada Championship say they respect Suva's decision, but the tournament will go on from tomorrow. Fiji under-23 football coach Frank Farina was not a happy man as his side lost 4-1 to Castellon FC in the fifth match of the Spain Tour this morning. Farina lamented the missed opportunities, but he was just as disappointed with the manner in which they conceded goals. I was probably disappointed in the sense we, we made some basic mistakes, you know, some silly mistakes, and when you're playing against better sides, uh, they'll punish you. So, you know, I was disappointed with pretty much all of the goals. That um, there was always, you know, a silly mistake in there, a basic error. So disappointed there, but we created enough, enough chances, I think, to uh, to score, you know, a lot more goals than just the one. Fiji's last match of the tour is against Shenhua Shanghai tomorrow at 3 a.m.
Fiji suffered a crushing 299 run defeat against England in their first match at the Under-19 Cricket World Cup in Bangladesh. The English piled on 371 for three while batting first. Daka Daka Tiko Isuba, Jack Charters and Josiah Mbale Dikombia were the only Fiji bowlers to grab a wicket. In reply, Fiji were all out for 72 runs. Penny Wuniwanga top scored with 36, half of the Fijian total. Fiji's next match is tomorrow against Zimbabwe. Newly formed rugby league club Rabu Rabu Rebutos is aiming for a strong finish at the Singatoka Nines tournament this Saturday. This Sambeto-based club made its debut at the 99th last year and lost in the cup semi-final. Team captain Joe Savo says players have been showing a lot of commitment in achieving their set target. To get our result. And it's all on uh, develop, uh, development. So we just uh, development these young boys and lots of new players have come on board this year. And we're hoping that uh, we net see this uh, untapped talent. The Singatoka Nines tournament will be held at Lawanga Park in Singatoka. And that was FPC Sports. Back to Akosita now for business. The first four locally made feature film titled Unlimited Tamasha was launched last night at Damoda City Cinemas in Lothala Bay in Suva. Attorney General Aya Sayed Kayum officiated the event along with cast and crew. Movie director Shrida Kalidai says the movie was made possible with the amount of support from various corporate bodies and local talents. To go through a lot of preparations, <laughs> it was an uphill battle, <laughs> considering that we actually had a zero budget uh, with us as such. Uh, but then what happened was when we got together, you know, planned our movie out, we got a lot of tremendous support from Fiji, a lot of corporates, they came forward. <laughs> Uh, to expose more Fijians to the cinematography world. But it also gives us an opportunity, as we said yesterday, in giving out the rebate that was given to the uh, Chinese movie production, an opportunity to showcase Fiji uh, to the rest of the world. And we're hoping, obviously, that uh, this movie will be shown in uh, numerous other countries. Fine weather apart from brief showers were experienced over most parts of the country today. Isolated afternoon thunderstorms affected the northern division. It was yet another hot and humid day around the country with all centers recording over the 30 mark. Lambasa was again the hottest on 34 degrees while Mba and Lautoka were on 33 and Suvanandi and Sabu Sabu were on 32. Cloudy periods with some showers of Loma Ibiti and Southern Lao Group, brief showers of the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Isolated afternoon or evening thunderstorms expected elsewhere mainly fine. And I'd look for Saturday, if so, brief showers of the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, afternoon or evening showers and thunderstorm elsewhere. And recapping the main stories, Prime Minister has revealed reasons why goodwill payments to landowners have been abolished. ILO mission concludes Fiji visit and gives recommendations. And Wellington Sevens fever grips players and fans in New Zealand and in Fiji. And on to this week's poll question, we are asking, do you agree with Semi Kunatani's inclusion in the Fiji Sevens team? Visit our FBC website to take part. And remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizensize at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. Or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Makusita Tali. Good night. I'm Sarah. I'm from Tawa. And I love listening to today FM, today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiatong. I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, Today FM rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Ulamila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks with Raki Raki. I'm Mary from Mandera, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.